Hey everyone, welcome back to Calculus 2. This will be lecture 9. And in this lecture, we're going to kind of begin uh, studying sort of the, well, kind of a broader sec collection of sections, um, all sort of um, revolving around the subject of uh, ap applications of definite integrals. Right, so in this section, we'll talk through specifically, this will be kind of a quicker section. We're going to talk through specifically the area of a region bounded by two curves. And this will be a shorter section, as I just said, but it'll be critically important that we understand this well uh, as we go forward into the sections that follow. Okay, so let's jump into it. So we'll call this section... 2.1, and this will be the area uh, of a region between two curves. All right. So uh, up until now, our definite integrals, you know, if we had a function like this, we are interested in the integral between a and b of this function. What that was basically giving us <clears throat> is the area under the curve uh, between the two uh, lines x equals a and x equals b and uh, above the x-axis. And so what we're going to move into is this scenario where we maybe have a function f. All right, we'll say that's f. And then we have another function g okay and this in this instance in this case what we're interested in is not the area all the way to the x-axis but the area that's specifically between the two functions so the area of the region bounded by the two curves okay so that's what this section is about <clears throat> And so kind of the best way, to, it's, it's a fairly intuitive section, I think. Um, the way to think about this is that, let's say you've got these two curves. So you've got your curve F, right? And we know that if we take, if we integrate F between A and B, <clears throat> then the integral from A to B of F, right, is equal to, you know, the area, right? the highlighted area. Um, if also we have, you know, so you say we got the curve F here and we've got some curve G and we integrate G between A and B, we know that that's going to give us uh, the area be be below G but in on the interval, right? Okay. All right. And so what we want to do in the case of finding the area between them is we want to do basically a subtraction, right? And it's probably kind of obvious, right? But if I integrate this whole region, right, that gives me F, or we'll call it A down here. The integral of F between A and B is this big A. That's this whole section, okay? If I integrate G on the same interval, then I get this other area B, right? Now what I want to do is I want to find this area, right? Now what is that area? Well, you can think of it in terms of A and B as just being uh, A minus B, right? So you take the whole area and you subtract off the part below G and that's the part that's between the two, right? So this would be the integral from A to B of F of X minus G of X. Okay, and that's the same thing as A minus B. Right? So taking this area and subtracting off this part that you don't want. Okay, and so that is actually um, what we're after here, right? And so you can kind of see this as just sort of intuitively being, you know, the integral from A to B of F of X minus the integral from A to B of G of X Right, so if you take this area and you subtract off this piece, then you get this piece here, which is basically equivalent to just kind of combining these two. We know that we can uh, we can combine the integrands, or we could separate them out. We've we've had this theorem from a while back that allowed us to do that, and so this is just basically 
doing that. Right, so we can, we can kind of think of it in this these intuitive in this sort of intuitive way. Okay, so we won't prove this explicitly, although it's probably fairly easy to do so. Um, but we just kind of want to think about it for a second and make sure that the integration scheme makes sense here, right? So to verify, um, we want to imagine a representative uh, rectangle of height, well, let's say of width delta x as per usual, and height uh, f of xi minus g of xi, right? And so we can kind of visualize that. Let's draw our functions in here, right? And so we've got some representative rectangle here, you know, kind of built between the two curves. Now the width we'll just say is delta x, that's fine, that part's, that's not the interesting part, but what's the height of this rectangle? Well, from the x-axis all the way to the top of the rectangle we'll say is f of xi, right? But then you want to remove the part down below where the rectangle is, you know, not relevant, and so that's going to be the g of xi. Right, so the height of the rectangle is f of xi minus g of xi. The width of the rectangle is delta x. Then the area is just equal to, of course, the height times the width, right? Which is, in this case, the f of xi minus g of xi times delta x. And so this is just one of the representative rectangles you can imagine this entire region containing such rectangles, right? And then the integral just kind of pops out of that. So by adding the areas of the n rectangles, right? So you add the areas and by adding the areas of the n rectangles, um, you know, and then of course, uh, um, imagining the partition, the norm of the partition to fall to zero, and corresponding the number of rectangles in the partition increasing to infinity, right? So, so by adding the area of the rectangles and letting the norm of the partition go to zero, i.e., and going to infinity, the number of rectangles then you're going to get this, right? You'll get the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum, i equals 1 to n, of f of xi minus g of xi times delta x, which of course is your integral, right, from a to b of f of xi minus g of xi. So that's where your integral comes from. And uh, we could go through and rigorously demonstrate this, right? But I think you could probably do it on your own. Um, it's uh, pretty straightforward, actually, to prove this with the same amount of rigor as what we've been kind of doing with normal integrals. So, so yeah, so basically <clears throat> the theorem goes like this. And we'll write this out just because there's a few things that we want to make sure that we know. So if f and g are continuous on the interval a b okay and now here's the important part that we really haven't mentioned yet and the function g of x is less than or equal to f of x uh, for all x in a b okay then the area between f and g on a b is given by of course what we've just talked about it's the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx okay so that's basically what we said and now we just have to be careful here that g and f have this relationship to one another and that there's no particular places on the interval a b 
where this relationship doesn't hold, right? We wouldn't want to try to calculate this using this formulation if G wasn't less than or equal to F on some part of the region. Okay, so we'd have to basically we'd have to break <clears throat> the integral up differently and think about it ever so slightly differently. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But if it's true that G is less than or equal to F on the entire region, then it's a straightforward exercise to find the area between them. It's just this right here. Okay, let's do an example. Okay, let's do an example here. So find the, let's find the area. So find the area between y equals x squared plus 2 and y equals negative x on the interval, um, let's say 0 to 1. Okay. So just because we're kind of trying to learn here, I'm going to draw this out. Let's just take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so we'll have one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Okay, let's draw like that. And so the first, uh, well, we'll start with this one, y equals negative x. This, this cuts through the origin, right? Basically kind of comes down like so, right? It's just the it's basically the identity function, but it's negative, so it's got a negative slope, right? So it comes down like that. And the other, so this would be y equals negative x. Okay, now the other function, y equals x squared plus two, it's a quadratic function. Um, it's basically shifted up two, two places on, on the y-axis. So it's gonna kinda come up like this and like this, right? And so the part that we're interested in is everything between zero and one, All right? So the zero is of course the y-axis, one is the line x equals one. So we're interested in this region right here, okay? And so by drawing it, obviously we can confirm that uh, in fact, y equals negative x is less than or equal to y equals x squared plus two everywhere on this interval, right? And so, Basically, we can say g of x is less than or equal to f of x on 0, 1, right? We haven't labeled these two functions as g and f, but, you know, we can think through that. And so then it's just a straightforward matter of kind of setting up the integral and calculating it. So if we go from 0 up to 1, now the f of x function is the quadratic. So we'll say x squared plus 2, and then the g of x function would be the negative x, right? And so that's what our integral would look like. And we can just clean this up a little bit before we do the integration. And we would say this is what? x squared plus x plus 2, right? like so. And we can integrate quickly. This would be x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x. We're going from zero up to one. All right, and if we plug in our values, so plugging in one, we get a third plus a half plus two, and then plugging in zero, we get zero, zero, zero. Okay, and so let's see here, we can we can count, figure this out quickly. This would be two third, or sorry, two over six, plus three over six plus uh, 12 over six. Okay, so it looks like 17 over six. Okay, so that's the area here, 17 over six. And is that reasonable? Yeah, that's definitely reasonable. Okay. So that's the idea. Now, naturally, like the fact that this is below the x-axis, the integral will appropriately evaluate that as a, as a negative piece of the you know of the expression so not a problem um, and ultimately you get 17 over 6 okay. let's try another one another example let's say we want to find the region 
uh, between, let's see, find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equals 2 minus x squared and g of x equals, there's that identity function, g of x equals x. And so in this case, we can again draw this, right? So, so this is 2 minus x squared. So this is a, basically like a negative x squared that's again shifted up 2 on the y-axis. And so it's going to come down like this. Okay, and then this other function, of course, is the identity function. It's going to kind of come up like that, down like that. These two are going to intersect one another, right? So what's different about this one is that you're just asked to find the area of the region bounded by the graphs, right? So we know once we draw it that it's basically this region here, right? Now notice that it doesn't tell us, you know, what the lower and upper bounds of the integration should be explicitly. It's kind of left to us to figure out. And so what we really want to do is we want to integrate this, this, uh, these two functions across the entire region where um, these two curves bound the region, right? So basically we need to figure out where this intersection occurs on the x-axis and also where this intersection here occurs on the x-axis. So we need to figure out what those two values are. This will be our a ultimately and this will be our b. But we're not told what those are so we need to use some algebra to figure out what those values need to be. And so how do we, how would we do that? Well it's a simple matter of setting the two functions equal to each other and solving for x. And we would expect that there would be two, um, two places where these two functions are equal to each other. And by setting them equal to each other and solving for x, we should be able to identify those. Okay, so we can do that. We'll set 2 minus x squared equal to x. Okay, and then basically we can see this is going to be a quadratic. And so we would get negative x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0. Right, and we can do a little bit of factoring here, and you know, we should be able to notice that this is negative x plus 2 times x minus 1, right? So x squared uh, plus 2x minus 1x minus 2, right? And then the negative outside. Okay, so that's going to factor down nicely into that. And that's going to tell us that um, our intersections occur at x equals 1 and x equals negative 2. It's pretty reasonably drawn actually given that. So maybe this is 1 and this would be negative 1 and that's negative 2. Right, so you can kind of see it's reasonably drawn. Okay, so that means our integral needs to be across the region negative 2 up to 1. So we want to integrate across negative 2 up to 1, right? So that, that interval. Okay, and we can also confirm that on that interval, you know, um, 2 minus x squared, the f function, is greater than or equal to g. All right, so that basically means we don't have to worry about breaking the region up, and you know, we can just, um, we can just plug it in just like before. Right, so we want to integrate from negative 2 up to 1, and it's going to be 2 minus x squared minus x. Okay, so this is your f function, that's your g function, subtract the 2 and integrate. Okay, and so this will be real similar to the previous example, I think. Negative 2 to 1, and so you're going to have negative x squared minus x plus 2. Is that the exact same integral? I think it might be. Well, yeah, I think it is actually. So when we integrate here, we get negative x cubed over 3 
minus x squared over 2 plus 2x. And now we're going from negative 2 up to 1. All right. And we can plug all of these values in, or plug in 1 and plug in negative 2. And so when we plug in 1, we get negative 1 third minus 1 half plus 2. And then we want to subtract from that the uh, expression evaluated at negative 2. And so when we do that, we get 8 thirds minus 4 halves minus 4. All right. And we could go through and <clears throat> just calculate everything with a denominator of 6, right? So it would be negative 2 minus 3 plus 12 over 6, and then minus. And that would be, what, 16 minus 12 minus 24 over 6. And what do we get here? We get uh, 7 over 6. Right, 7 over 6, yep. Okay, and then over here we'd get 16, let's see, that'll be 16 minus 12. 16 minus 12, that's just 4 over 6. Okay, and then you would add them together, so 7 plus 4 over 6. Something like that, right around there. Uh, I, think, I think something went wrong here. Uh, that's okay, though. Right, so I'll, I'll, I'll just cross this out and, and say you guys go ahead and figure this piece out. I did a little quickly, but basically it's, it's a straightforward exercise, right? So it's uh, the tricky part here, the thing that's an elaboration on the previous examples, is that you need to find where these two functions intersect one another, and that's going to translate into uh, coordinates on the x-axis, and those coordinates are what you're going to use as your bounds in your integral. All right, excellent. Let's do another one kind of similar to that, similar to this one, uh, but more complicated. <clears throat> so here's the wording. Uh, find the area of the region between the graphs of the two graphs here, we've got f of x equals 3x cubed minus x squared uh, minus 10x. Okay, so that's the first one. And g of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2x. Okay, all right, so there's the there's the problem, right? So similar to the last um, problem, uh, we're looking for the region between the graphs, right? And so I think one of the things um, that's useful when you're plot when you're doing these, just pull out some kind of a graphing utility and plot the two functions on the same coordinate system. And I think you know usually a lot of intuition can be generated by doing that. And so in this case, I've done that. You know, maybe I don't remember if I did went out to Wolfram Alpha or what I did, but um, I just went out and plotted these two, right? And so if I've got one, two, negative one, negative two, and then we'll do the same thing here. Okay. So the, these two curves, F and G here, they intersect in three different places. Okay, so the first one intersects down way down here, and well, this is going to be the point negative 2, negative 8. It's not drawn very, my y-axis should probably be compressed a bit. Yeah, in fact, I'll make this negative 4, and then we'll make this negative 8. And so this would be positive 4. So our y-axis is a little compressed here. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then, so they're going to intersect down here. And they also intersect at the origin, these two functions. And then they also intersect over here at 2, 0. Okay, so f is a cubic, right? So 
that'll mean that it intersects the x-axis three times. It kind of comes up like this, and then it comes down like this, and it does one of these. Not exactly, but about like this, right? So it looks a bit like this. And this is f of x. Uh, g of x is, you know, it's a quadratic. Okay, so it's gonna do something different. It kind of comes up like this, goes through the origin, finds a maximum somewhere right around here, and then comes back down. And this is our g of x. Okay, so you can see there's a couple of regions here. You've got this one here, and you've also got this one here. All right, so this is saying find the area of the regions between the graphs f and g. All right, so this would be the two regions. Now out here, this guy heads down, this one heads down. They both head down at different rates, so they never cross again. And the same thing over here, G is heading down, F is heading up, so they never cross again. So these would not be regions bounded by the graph, the, just these two, okay? So these are the two that we're interested in. But one thing you'll notice is that on this region over here, right? On this region over here, F is larger than G. Right, F is the, remember the cubic equation, it's this one. So it's larger than the quadratic. And on this interval here, it's the reverse, right? Here's G is up at the top, F is underneath. So over here, uh, F is less than or equal to G, okay? So we can still use the theorem that we previously developed. We just have to be careful uh, to set up the integrals correctly. Basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use one integral here where we're saying f minus g and then another integral here where we're saying g minus f and then we want to add them together. Okay. Right then of course the bounds are going to be different. Here this will be from negative 2 up to 0 and this will be from 0 up to 2. Okay, So that's kind of the picture. That's what we're up to. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and set these integrals up and let's calculate this area. So we'll, we'll have the area, the integral from negative two up to zero. And in this case, it's gonna be f minus g. So it will be three x cubed minus x squared minus 10 x minus uh, this guy, which would be negative x squared plus two x. Okay, and the whole thing, dx, that's gonna tell us this piece here. And we're gonna have to add to that a second integral from negative, from zero up to positive two. And it's gonna be the reverse in that case. It's gonna be negative x squared plus two x minus the cubic. Three x cubed minus x squared minus 10 x dx, okay. So you've got this integral here for this section, this integral here for this section, you add it together, you get the whole thing. Okay, um, let's go ahead and clean these up. So basically just combine terms and make these a little bit more straightforward. So we'll have the integral from negative two to zero of, let's see, it'll be three x cubed minus, uh, the x squared drop out, so minus 12 x. Okay, plus the integral from zero up to positive two. Now what happens here? Well, in this case, you'll have negative three x cubed, and then it's gonna be plus 12 x, right? Okay, excellent. And so then we can integrate these. These are simple polynomials, real easy to, to calculate. And we get three x to the fourth over four minus 12 x squared over two. And that's from negative two up to zero. Plus, be careful not to subtract here. Frequent mistake people make is they forget what they're doing and they put a subtraction there. So then plus the second integral, which would be negative three x to the fourth power over four plus 12 x squared over two. 
and that's from zero up to two. All right, <clears throat> and we can calculate this pretty easily. So if I put in a zero here, I'm gonna get, let's see, that'll be zero and zero basically. And if I plug in a negative two, I'll get, so altogether this should be negative 12 plus 24. Okay, and then over here, um, I'm gonna get negative 12 plus 24, and then minus zero plus zero, right? So I'll just leave it like, like that. And so all together, oops, sorry, this should be minus. Uh, no, that's not right, that should be plus. Yeah, oh, sorry, that should be plus. Okay, and then all together I get, let's see, the 24s, that's 48, and then minus 24, so I get a 24 all together. Okay, perfect. All right, so that is that example. And so the area of this entire region is 24, okay? All right, very good. So that is that one. Again, this doesn't quite match the image, so this is a, not properly drawn to scale. You might want to re-graph this, use some, a graphing utility to make sure that these peaks are high enough. This should come up a lot higher, I believe. Um, okay, so that is that example. Now, sometimes it's convenient Sometimes it can be convenient to uh, calculate areas based on um, x being a function of y instead of y being a function of x. So let's do an example of this. So find the area of the region bounded by x equals 3 minus y squared and x equal y plus 1. Okay, so again, notice here that x is a function of y as written. So x is a function of y as written. Okay. Now, would it be possible to write this as you know, y is a function of x? Perhaps, perhaps. But as it's written, x is is a function of y. Okay, let's plot these two and see what see what it looks like here. So if I have my y-axis and I've got my x-axis, then x equals three minus y squared. That's a quadratic, right? And so it's going to actually cut through somewhere like this. This is x, this is y. So you can see clearly this cannot be written as a function as of y as a function of x because it would, you know, because of the fact that it wraps around on itself. Uh, so this would not be a function, but it can be written as x being a function of y, right? So you kind of think of that as sort of like rotating the um, rotating the coordinate system. And in that case, then a vertical line test would be okay. So this is the first function, that's this one. And then the second one is x equals y plus one. All right, so that is actually gonna cut through like this. So this is uh, x equals y plus one, and then this guy here is x equals three minus y squared. Right, and so what we're interested in is the area bounded by these two. Right, so we can see that that's gonna be this region here. Okay, that's, that, that's the region we're interested in. Now, if we were trying to find this area using vertical rectangles, you'd notice that right here, um, we would have to have two separate integrals, right? Because of the um, because of the upper boundary sort of changing here, 
right? So over here, the upper boundary is y equal, uh, x equals y plus one. But once we get over here, the boundary changes from being this function to being this function. So we would have to think about if we were gonna do this using vertical rectangles, we would have to think about how to change the integral here at this, at this barrier. But notice that if we use horizontal rectangles, right, a rectangle system that looks like this, then over the entire range from this point all the way down to here where they intersect each other, um, you're gonna have this function here being the greater of the two, right? So this is really straightforward if you think of this as x is a function of y versus um, the reverse, the way we're used to thinking about it. So we just kind of want to think about this uh, as being sort of uh, sideways, right? Um, and so let's see here. So one of the things that is given in the problem um, is that the two functions intersect each other at the points, uh, this would be negative one is the, is the x coordinate here of the intersection and negative two. So this would be the point negative one, negative two. And then this other point is x equals two. And is it two, one? I believe it's two, one. Okay, so this would be one here. Okay, so you could figure that out as well. You could set the two equal to each other, but uh, I'm just gonna give you that information. Okay, and so once we've done that, once we have that information and the fact that we're gonna integrate this uh, across y rather than across x, we can set up our integrals, right? We can set up the integral to be the integral from y equals negative two up to y equals one right across this whole region. Okay, and it's gonna be the quadratic, so three minus y squared, minus the linear part here, y plus one, and it's dy. Okay, remember we're in integrating with respect to y, not x. All right, and so we can clean this up a little bit and we get what, negative y squared minus y plus two. And then the integral is easy to calculate, negative y cubed over three minus y squared over two plus two y. Okay, and this is from negative two up to one. Okay, and then we can plug in our limits here and we get negative one third minus one half plus two and then minus oops minus <laughs> uh, and then plugging in the negative two we get eight thirds minus two minus four okay and when we run through all of that, uh, we would get nine halves. At the end of the day, that's what you should, you should land on nine halves. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Very good. So these, this, these have been, you know, some examples of how to calculate um, the area between curves or the area bounded by regions. Uh, or the, uh, of the area of regions bounded by curves, All right? So this kind of thing here, or slightly more interesting would be, you know, where you've got a function going like this, and then you have another function going like that, and they intersect at a couple of points, and you wanna know the area between the curves, okay? And so this sort of work is gonna come up in, in the next couple of sections. So what we're gonna do in the next, a couple lectures is we're going to start talking about volume okay and we're going to specifically be interested in taking regions like this and spinning them and finding the volume that's spun um, spun out by regions like this or like this um, using integration using just a single integral to calculate volumes 
Um, so volume using a single integral. All right, when we get into calculus three, we'll talk about volumes with multiple integrals, um, but we're gonna keep it simple for now and just consider uh, volumes where a single integral will work. Okay, so we'll get into that next time. We'll see you then.